to look at aspects of soil structure, how to identify good and bad soil structure, what to look at in a field. So when, when looking at a field for a start, it's, it's, it's often good to put it in perspective, is to go to an area in the field that looks visibly in, in good condition. If there's a standing crop, obviously, you can judge with the crop. As in here, we've got a field of stubble. Try and choose somewhere for a start that hasn't got visible compaction wheelings or, for example, is a headland or part of the edge of the field. So that for a start, you can judge what the soil structure is, is should be ideally like. And from there, then you can go to areas that are of more concern in the field and it gives it some perspective to be able to judge those having dug for a start in a good area. Well, we've got an area of the field here that's not adjacent to a headland. You can see one or two areas where we've got visible wheelings, whether that's a trailer wheeling, a harvesting wheeling quite perhaps. Um, we're going to keep out the way of those and dig here somewhere where it looks fairly good. Just to start to get a bit of a feel for what the soil is like in general. You don't need to dig a massive hole, but you do need to dig one that's big enough and deep enough to take a judgment to below any area you're intending to, to cultivate. So normally that's between one and a half and two, two spades deep. I'm digging the hole you'll notice I'm really digging from one or two sides as opposed to all four sides. The idea is to leave myself two faces that I can examine with a pen knife. We use the pen knife to see how the soil moves as we the technique that I find the best is to push the knife in a little bit soil sideways. Just push the knife in no more than five or ten millimeters at a time and then flick the soil sideways into the hole. If that soil breaks apart and breaks away horizontally it's a sign that there is more compaction. You get the, the horizontal fissures like we saw a minute ago. Having dug the hole though you can then start to look at the structure, how that breaks away and feel, feel the strength of it with a knife if that changes as you go through the depth. <coughs> look at the porosity of the soil itself and look at the, the roots of the crop that's grown. So those three indicators are really going to give you a feel for how that soil is. Good example of, of worm holes there going through, through the soil and it's naturally pulling apart very easily. It's always a good sign if you can do that. Natural um, channels and voids there. The more you can put roots through that, the more it'll hold it apart, hold it open. Okay, so here we're examining a compacted area, a wheeling, which is, is showing signs of platy structure, a lot less porosity, and the soil is breaking away with these horizontal fissures here. You can see it's an indicative of. of uh, and, and generally where roots try and grow through this they'll grow more horizontally so it, it's a really good indication of, of, of less than optimal structure and if you can use that to identify how deep that effect goes you can then start to determine where to set the machine to take that out ultimately the thing that will put the soil right are plant roots as opposed to uh, actually working with a machine but sometimes you need the machine to actually get in there for a start and open the soil up to allow the roots to get down through and hold the soil open. Another really good way of, of, uh, of, of holding soil open and giving it resilience is to build organic matter levels in the profile. Uh, growing roots down through, try not to pass up the opportunity to, uh, to put roots down in, in, in a soil. If then it's important, as important really, to dig after the machine has passed and make sure it's done the job that you've planned for it to do. So you need to dig down and check that, number one, that the, that the tines have loosened effectively across the full width of the profile and they've done a, a good shattering job. In other words, they're working above their critical depth as opposed to below it. Classic signs of working 
below the critical depth or not moving the soil all the way across. You can see here the soil has, has been shifted effectively where the tines have passed but not in the middle. They actually haven't shattered all the way across the profile. More often than not that's as a result of either going too slow uh, and not increasing that shattering action or the wearing parts on the tines not been effective and not actually moving the soil properly. Here's a field that's a somewhat lighter soil structure and it's prone to a little bit more of natural slumping and as a result of that these soils generally have got less porosity particularly after an extended period uh, without um, any form of loosening cultivation they will tend to slump down and, and close some of that natural porosity. Hugely important on these soils to build organic matter levels and, and get roots down through the profile to hold these soils open at all times. Um, when you're judging these soils it's a little trickier sometimes um, to, to determine whether you've actually got compaction or just natural slumping. Uh, the easiest way to, 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 to show that is to look at the roots that are in there from the previous crop and they'll tell you whether they were actually able to get through that profile or whether in actual fact the porosity and the, 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 the compaction is that tight that it's not allowing roots through. Having determined the depth you want to work, at the same time it's, it's very important to check that the soil isn't too too wet for the machine to do an effective job. It's another reason that potentially the soil isn't moved correctly. The, way, the best way to do that is to check the soil moisture by a simple ribboning test. If you, if you grab a lump of soil from the depth you're working, or that you want to work, and, uh, and ribbon it out, if it forms a, a long plastic worm, then generally it's a sign that the soil is too wet to really do an effective job of loosening. If however here, as you can see, the soil is crumbling as it's, as it's ribboned out, the moisture content is low enough to do an effective job.